Welcome everyone. It is Tuesday, October 15th, and this is the Millville Planning Board meeting. We will open with roll call. Roland Deschalis. Jason Milley. Ann Maloney. Justin Allen. Um, with us via Zoom, we have Dylan Lindholm, our town planner. We have um, at least one more member of our board who will be joining us in the next couple of minutes. So we're just going to get started. Um, we do not have any uh, meeting minutes tonight, so we'll table that for next time. Just going to jump around for a quick second. Um, we will not be opening the public hearing for warrant articles for special town meeting, as that special town meeting has been um, canceled. Cancel. We're not having it. We're not uh, having a fall one. meeting. All right. Moving on, then I'll be looking to open a public hearing for site plan review, 13 Lincoln Street. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, I'm sorry, I do want to go back quickly and just let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so um, our public hearing, uh, Planning Board of the Town of Millville will hold a public hearing on Monday, October 15th, 2024, at 6 p.m. at Town Hall regarding a site plan approval at 13 Lincoln Street for use as a banquet hall. The property is listed in two districts, commercial business in the front with a back portion in the village residential district. The application and plans are available for viewing by contacting planning at millvillema.org. We have the folks from 13 Lincoln Street with us tonight. Yep, yep. Come on up. Thank you so much. Yeah. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about this project. So my name is Mohammed Kindil. I'm the project manager and in charge of the process. And with Jeff is a architect. He's busy at the Providence meeting. And this project, we're trying to do the bridal hall and the community hall. The local community can have small events over there and small kind of restaurant in the side. This is open with the bridal hall. It's not like a publicly, only for the events. So if it's anybody organized, any public want to be do that, like a birthday parties, wedding or anything, it's this hall is available. And we want to be do uh, extra inside decorations and everything, which we're planning to do that, which is we already do the sprinkler system design because the, this building does not have a sprinkler system. We already working with the electrician to make a master plan to make sure safe and fire department to be all the fire and everything that should be there. Uh, we're looking for 400 people capacity uh, and small community can have 50 people minimum to the 400 people. So that's going to be available for the election campaign. We're going to offer for the community. So if you have election or November, they can use that or some other uh, community need anything else for the hall. So we can set the date for the local town people. It's something like we're celebrating on the like a U.S. Army Day or something. That's available free of cost. So that's not going to be any cost for that to the town hall, for the brighter hall. So we can schedule that in advance. If you let us know 2025, five days, city hall or local people, local community, uh, then we can bring some business over here to kind of job fair. So we do that in our community and local community. We from like a Lincoln, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So it's not far from us. So we do jobs. We have a business community who do looking for people to work. So we do in over, we have a small hall in North Smithfield. So we do job fair. We do community get together. We do campaign or anything, which is we don't charge them. So let's, we busy on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Monday to Friday hall is available for any community event. So that, that's the plan is, and it's a beautiful place, which we saw that have a potential on it, the top of the hill, we can be, it's going to be a 3D design, which is going to come in a few days, which is show like a whole front of the, going to be look like a, it's kind of beautiful town. So it's when whoever coming from the up the hill down, 
you're going to see that like a big light and sign and everything. It's, look, it's going to look beautiful. That's what the plan is. Yeah. And, and Just to that's a good know, plan. rejuvenate, you know, <laughs> the town and uh, uh, bring some, you know, uh, business to town. And if, if you see this one, so this is going to be already there, but it's going to be more neat and clean. The you know, driveway is going to be fine. And we're looking for the town give us a little light over there when the more traffic or something, like a blinking light or stop light. Maybe we can install it ourselves, and, but we're looking for that in the plan too. You know, when they even people leaving, yeah. so we want to have it. people push the button to passing by or like a more people, 50 cars or 60 cars passing through the town or anything. So they can see that. So, Is there a room for 400 people in that building? There's a capacity of uh, 400 people. In, in, in parking? Uh, parking, we have uh, around uh, 100 cars. 140 cars. 140 cars, you know, uh, which is according to the town, you know, requirement. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to go for the fire department, whatever they require us. Okay. Would, because every parking, like a two and a half people you can have in that. So they're going to calculate that. We don't know. We're looking for 400. I don't know how much the fire department going to do maximum. Dylan, you have something to say? Um, yeah, uh, Pam, if we're going to have uh, Yeah, it's going to be speaking, questions after. Well, oh, sorry. The road driver at 23 Lincoln Street. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay. I just, I just, um, also I would like to know how late that function would be able to go to. You know, especially on Sunday night, if you have a function, because I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm normally in bed like 7.30 at night, so... I don't want to get up at 9 o'clock with some horns beeping or because somebody's running across the road or things like that. We'll definitely take that. Yeah, that will probably be part of whatever. Yes. We get. If we move forward, there'll permit. be conditions and a special permit, yeah. Okay. So this is a site plan review. Um, there will also be a lot of other permits that need, especially like capacity or talking. Um, that'll be on the building commissioner. Um, Hours, I think you can determine at planning board. Make an agreement there. Okay. Please continue, sir. Yep. Uh, that's the that's the, we we want this community, and we want to help the community over here. Anything we can do for the we we are profit sharing. We're gonna to be if the, they allow us, we can open like a little bit more business friendly street. And we're looking for not this project, but more project to do in the Millville area. Nice. That, that's, that's the plan is right now. Any question? We'll definitely ask. No. Um, well, you mentioned that you were looking to have planned events on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tell us a little bit more about um, what that is. I think what I'm hearing are some concerns about being able to get home, you know, from work in the evenings or, or, you know, getting around town. We're not used to having 400 cars driving through the middle of town. Well, uh, during the weekend, uh, when there is a special occasion, let's say some, you know, community get together, Sunday night, Monday, everybody's going to work. So there is no way. Most of, uh, you know, the event happens uh, Friday and Saturday evening. But... Uh, you know, I mean, I understand all people, they want to get up early in the morning, they have to do things. So the late night is, you know, it's not, I mean, it's not possible. People usually leave 9, 10 o'clock maximum, you know, because the event usually starts, let's say, 5 or 6 o'clock and a couple hours, you know. So we, other event we did, four hours. So if it start 5, 9 o'clock, it's done. Some of the even they're looking for like a graduation party for local community. They want to start seven. So that's some time go up, but we we try to as employees to send it home because we have a local uh, students for schools. They're going to work for us because uh, we need people to work in the community on the weekends. There, there, there will be job, uh, you know, job there, opportunity. There's yeah. a lot of job opportunity for the students. They can learn that and how to do the management skills for the catering, how the management skills or managing the hall, because we don't have people. We're looking for some people from the community. They can help us and they get the salary of that. So mostly the time Friday, 10 o'clock, 
it's not gonna to be like a midnight or after it's not because mostly some students is like 16 18 they prefer to go home 10 o'clock the most of the parties and everything's over 9 30 and they go home and that's most of the time is like 9 30 and 10 o'clock um, walk us through some of the changes that you're proposing to the site if or whatnot or in what kind of work is involved so this is the site we have right now we're not changing anything for the building structure or anything we only working on to the parking lot the parking lot lights is need to be new construction over there and more parking lot, more like flowers and more bed, like more decorative area in the outdoor. In the building, we're not gonna be construct anything. Inside, yes, it's need a fire coated, it need a fire exit and everything. The, that, that's the plan with the architect and the construction people gonna be finalized that with the planning and with the zoning and the fire code, everything should be that. But we don't building up anything new. Only we do just paints uh, and stuff. Paints yeah. the whole building different color, and entrance maybe like have a little bit bigger door, decorative pergolas in the back, fireplaces in the back, so people can sit down in the back and have fun, like an outdoor party if they want to do that. But mostly inside. But construction wise, I don't think so. There maybe. is no structural changes. Yeah. You were talking about parking lot lights. Parking lot lights. So we we we'll be doing poles. Poles, yes. And there'll be whatever the height the fire and city department, yep. electric department allow Try us. Keep the... And should we keep it in toward us, not for the community right. side? I got another question for twenty three Lincoln Street. Is the house in the front that they painted blue being rented to somebody? Uh, we gonna to rent it, or we gonna to use for the employees? Okay. And. Uh, well, usually we have houses we give to the back to Section 8 or somebody like a, where people can live there. We don't need right now. Maybe later on we can use, right now this project probably takes six months to a year to complete it. And we're going to use it to rent someone, yes. If somebody interested to rent it, definitely. But it has to be fixed a lot of things in this house. Okay. It looked like been closed like a long time. Yeah. Is, it, does the property have enough room for the amount of people if you have a party for the septic system? Well, there is a lot of ledge there. Well, uh, that issue can be addressed uh, uh, throughout the engineer. You know, the, he's a technical person. We are not. So the technical answers, uh, Jeff Likens, he is uh, the engineer and the architecture. He can definitely, you know, uh, and they'll have to satisfy that with the board of, of health as well. So that's okay. that. They're the, they're the yay or nay on that sort of thing. Because that's the pass, like you yeah, said, the capacity. My, my main concern is when they have parties like that and those people leave it. Lincoln Street is very busy. It's not worried too much going up, but these people coming out of the S curve, coming down in front of my in front of my driveway. That driveway is blocked. You cannot see it clearly. Right. Okay. There hasn't been any major accidents there, but not saying there couldn't be any major accidents there. We had traffic that's got busy over the past 30 years that I've lived here. Right. I have to be careful at six, at 4.30 in the morning when I leave that somebody doesn't clip me coming down. Yeah, I understand. Because travel, speed limit's only 25. I've, I've, there was a motorcycle that went up the street the other day. He must have been doing 65 going through that S turn. I'm surprised he made it, but he did. You uh, understand? If there's an elephant in the room, did you yeah. are we resolving the land issues? Uh, Which I believe is where the septic system is located. Am I right or yes. wrong on that? Uh, yes, but uh, uh, so far uh, uh, there is no you know uh, resolve in gotcha. that matter. Yep. And uh, we were told that, you know, there will be a meeting, a uh, board of uh, selectmen meeting, I believe. Okay. And uh, uh, we didn't get a chance to att attend that, but we can definitely reach out to the members yep. and uh, meet them individually or whatever, you know, they ask. We can do that. We have a letter from 1992, the land was transferred to the 
church name, right. but never been registered as a deed. So you'll be working out with Peter Cruz on the Yeah, Peter, Peter is working yeah. on it, yes. I don't have any other questions. Yeah, I was going to just wanted to make sure that the public feels invited to ask if anyone has any additional questions. Yeah. I have a few name questions. Name and where you live. Um, my name is Jared Clowery. Amy Clowery is my wife. We own 8 Chestnut Hill Road. Um, do you mind if I just point out to him my property line? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, sure, sir. Okay, so here's the... Uh, right here. Is that yours, sir? No, this is perfect. This is the house. My property line runs from the front of your property line all the way here, mm -hmm. right to here and into the woods. Okay. All here you have direct access to my backyard. Um, this building here has all high-pressure sodium lights on it. Um, with the church, I had a good good relationship. I actually bought the houses next to a church, and it was nice. Nice, yes. And I had a good relationship with them. So we'll definitely have a good relationship as a well, neighbor. Well, you know, it's hard to do a garden with high-pressure high sodium lights, like, <clears throat> and it goes, like, right onto my property. All right. The church never did anything at night, and it was always small congregations. Yes. And me and my wife are Christian. So it was a good buy. That's right. Um, is there religious connotations or whatever, however you say it to your... Uh, there will be some, you know, uh, like religious, uh, I would say just family gathering. You okay. Know, sometimes our community, uh, you know, a kid... I'm a assuming kid, it's Muslim. Yes. Yeah, yes. and I have no, no problems there, but like where's so the closest we, mosque? Uh, like mosque is a uh, North know, Smithfield. Uh, North Smithfield. Okay. Yeah, it's ten minutes away. Okay. You know, but uh, uh, there is not much enough room over there to you know there. So, <clears throat> another question I have for you guys. Mm -hmm. I had a really good relationship with the church. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, there's a lot of growth around there and stuff. Uh, trees, windstorms, everything. I allowed their landscapers to put their brush and debris on the back of my property. And in return, they gave me a little right of way access yep. at the corner. I'm sure you guys have driven up. I there. saw the yeah, you chop boards, right? I saw you. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I do all yeah. the lumber. They gave me a right of way access right here. Mm -hmm. And if the planning and zoning and whatever you guys do here prove everything, I would like to continue that relationship if it's possible. That's possible. That's why it is possible, <laughs> Yeah, my my property comes from the street, and it's really no, high. I understand. I saw that exit. You know, yeah, so the property. access for that, and you know, it was a good deal because a lot of times big trees fall on stuff, yeah. and I help them out. My friend, I also have a very good relationship with the uh, with the church people where we bought it from. Okay. And a uh, very good understanding for a couple of years with Father Adams in Worcester, so we share a lot of uh, you know uh, religious dialogues. And uh, I'm also a religious person. Okay. You know, we're not going to serve any liquor over there. Sounds good. So there, there will be events, uh, like very contained events. But maybe maybe what I'm getting at, too, is if you have big events and they're running in tonight, we can also maybe everybody that. that's there gets notified, like, hey, this isn't our property, because it's all woods up there. Yeah. You don't wander woods. onto mine. We might be put the little I fence tools over and there. Equipment. And the lighting issue. It's really bad. Like when they fire up those high pressure sodiums, mm -hmm. it's like daytime in my backyard until midnight. Try growing tomatoes with high pressure sodium. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's impossible. Right? Well, we'll work it out, you know. Yeah. For us, neighbors are very important, just like, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. For so us. this is, you know, something that I can vouch for you, I mean, for ourselves, that. Uh, We'll work it out with the neighbors and we'll make sure, you know, you are satisfied. And your convenience. And your convenient, because this is also something I hold very dear when it comes to religion, you know, so. I appreciate it. So I, I don't know how it's going to go I, for you guys. Or well, however it goes, it goes. But yeah. it's fun. We're really. No, no, I understand. Your closest neighbors. Yes. I saw you over there. Oh, okay. Times, you know? Yeah. And you can always say that. 
Yes. Oh, sorry, so you're talking when they have wedding events, they will be serving alcohol, right? If they're Pardon having me? a wedding event, they will be serving alcohol. Well, uh, there will be not alcohol in that facility. Okay. You know, because uh, it's a lot of nuisance for uh, the community. You know, when people get drunk. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, no. yes, <laughs> we don't drink. We don't allow anybody to drink. Okay. They're, uh, okay. The most of the gatherings are like, you know, graduation, party. graduation parties. If, if there is any weddings, yeah. we don't drink on our weddings. Okay. You know, it's all uh, just food. <laughs> we love food. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we you drink know. at our wedding, so I'll never get married. I have. <laughs> <laughs> the last right. time I had champagne on my wedding and it's been 25 years, you yeah. know, so. So yeah, those were my only concerns. I don't know if anybody else has any. And what about? Thank you. What about if you have a function and make yeah. sure the dumpster is empty, so we don't get any rodents in, in the. We'll make sure, ma'am. Of course, you know okay. when there is so much, uh, you yeah, know, food left over. Food yeah. left over uh, that'll be that can be taken care of. Okay. As Appreciate quickly it. as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Dylan, did you have any um, additional questions or comments on this? Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to find the unmute because I shared my screen. Um, I know that the police chief has some traffic concerns. Um, I don't have a formal response from him, so I think I'd, I'd want to get that before a decision is made. Same. Um, just so we're aware and also talk to the fire chief and make sure he's comfortable too. I've, I sent this out to them a while back, but I didn't get like a formal response. I just got, they, they talked to me informally. So I'm just waiting on like an actual letter. Yeah, standard um, for us is to make sure that we're taking into consideration uh, the other departments and what they're thinking um, to make sure that if we need to consider anything for our approval, we will. Um, so I think, you know, I appreciate that you guys came tonight. I think we'd be looking to continue this till our next meeting. Dylan, um, I don't remember when our next meeting is. If Do you have that handy? Uh, it's, there's one, it's in November. We don't yeah. have another one in October. Mm -hmm. I know we have another holiday in November. So I... Yeah, we pick dates for the rest of the year. I just don't remember. Yeah, November 25th, it's, kind of it's late. But that's because Veterans Day falls on our usual Monday, second Monday. So um, if we if we continue this until the twenty fifth, by then we should hear back from police and fire, fire chiefs. Fire, police. And we give you guys a little bit more time for figuring out the land piece of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yes, that. Uh, all right. So uh, that we need to discuss with the uh, with the board of selectmen. Correct. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, we just want to start uh, doing, you know, little things here and there. You know, like we paint the house. We're going to put some white fence around it so it looks nice. You know, good feeling when you pass by the house. You know, it's just a good picture. So we just want to start doing some, you know, like uh, now that we have time, like landscape and, you know, clean whatever we need to do or maybe some paints and stuff on the building you know so so i guess we're gonna have to wait till okay yep all right sounds good all right um so motion to continue this public hearing until november 25th at 6 p.m i'll make it i will second it all in favor aye 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 all right all right. Thank you. Thank you, well, so thank you very much uh, you. for your time. Will thank you, all of you. Uh, no, this, you're being notified right now. All right. So. That's going to be November what? November 25th, 25th 6 at 6 p.m. Okay. It's a Monday it's a nice here. Okay. Do you like it? It's the same color as mine. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions, stop by there. We have it here. She grew up in Boston. Best, best form of flattery, right? No, my family's from Richmond. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. Uh, they live in uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's me to be the Yeah, the dog the dog is friendly. Yes. Yeah. When it came to the church, they always call me for all right, we're going to move on um, to the next item on our list. There you go. There we go. I want to make a motion I've never used that before. to continue the public hearing for 179th Air Street. And I am going to kick it over to you. Hi. Justin, you got this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can do it. So um, I made a motion to continue I, the public hearing for yes, 179th. I will, I will second. Any other discussion? James yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hello, Jack. Aye. Hello, Jack's back. I'm temporarily alone. Uh, the engineer is delayed. He'll be here at 6.30. So. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. Um, I can give you an update. Um, I think the last time we were here, we talked about we received your peer engineer's review. It was rather lengthy. We responded to that. Since then, we got a second review, yeah. and we whittled it down quite a bit. We've now responded to that. We have not received that counter response, I guess, is the best way to put it. But we're very confident. It was mostly technical issues regarding the drainage calculations yeah. and then some other issues. Yeah, I read all the second responses. Yes. Yeah. Um, we uh, have not heard back from the fire chief since he said he wanted to run his calculations on the size of the cistern. We're offering 20,000 gallon cistern. We'll make it whatever he wants, but we haven't heard. I know Dylan's trying to get a hold of him and to see if we can size it correct. So we haven't heard back on the cistern or 13 Lincoln Street from the, from the chief, correct? Yeah. Um, correct. As far as conservation, we're meeting with them tomorrow night. We're expecting closure on that. Um, they too are waiting for some of the comments from CET. We now have those. And I know that they have a few issues that, uh, and maybe you guys had that, with that Ilan, Dylan sent to me regarding um, the transfer of the open space to Metacomet. Um, in, it's our intention to put into the condo docs that the condo association will be responsible to pay any fee, to pay the yearly fee to Metacomet Land Trust. That, I know they'll have a fee, I don't know what it is, but we'll have that in the docs. We're also going to make it um, require in the condo docs that the cistern, whatever size it is, will be made available to the fire chief 24 seven for any other issues above and beyond the condos. Um, we, took the liberty of working with Dylan to draft a decision. Um, I have one copy. Rob is supposed to have copies for you all. We just finished it today. It outlines what I just told you. It outlines um, your standard conditions you have. And it outlines some of the issues regarding the uh, transfer of the land. The, in theory, the Conservation Commission would hold the conservation restriction on the property. It'll never be owned by the town. It, it'll go from the current, own, and here's Rob. I couldn't have timed that better. It, in theory, it will go from the current owner to Metacomet Land Trust. The conservation restriction will be owned by the Conservation Commission. That conservation restriction will be approved by the state and it's in perpetuity. And there'll be a fee that the condo association will be liable to pay for. So, um, as I, and I'll let Rob go through some of the engineer's 
nearing changes he made. Oh, there was also a question about um, at the end of the day, when this is all built, um, will the parking and the trailhead for the open space be part of the developer's responsibility? And that answer is yes. So I think we've answered every question and dotted most of the I's and T's. Um, as I said, we took the liberty of drafting a, with Dylan's help, a decision that outlines what I just said. Um, and I'll let Rob talk a little bit about the engineering and what's still a little bit outstanding. In the decision, there is a clause that says before we can record the decision, that all comments from CET have to be complied with and approved by the town planner. So I answer my question. So if we do vote and we do approve, none of it takes full effect until all of the conditions are satisfied, Correct. all the questions are satisfied. We don't expect many. There might be two or three. Yep. So how do I do? <laughs> you only filibuster, I Jack. <laughs> and then we could talk about churches or anything else you want to talk about. Mm. Um, thanks. I patience. outlined what we've done so far, Great. but I didn't get to any details on the engineering. Piece. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, again, for the record, uh, Rob Kanapik from Allen Engineering, and um, I'm not sure how long uh, you've, this matter has been before you this evening. I hope, Five hopefully, it's a matter of minutes, minutes. but. Okay, I appreciate that. I had an obligation in uh, Uxbridge. So um, just the brief recap, we filed a couple of um, applications, an open space permit, a stormwater permit. There was um, the usual back and forth between your reviewing engineer and our office. And the um, reviewing engineer issued uh, two letters. Um, our most recent response, which I, I trust you have a copy of, is October 10th. And what we've done in that letter is instead of recapping all of the 50-something comments, um, most of which your reviewing engineer said no further comment, uh, we just included in that letter um, the comments that were not yet resolved. So I'm going to just go through very quickly and um, just point out the revisions to the plan that are addressed in this last comment letter. And I understand that you're waiting from your reviewing engineer to his response to this, uh, which I expect will be uh, further comments saying, you know, yes, that's been addressed. So um, one of the comments related to um, the need for fire protection, and I think we discussed this last time, but the um, we, we did show a, um, a tank to supply water for fire protection purposes. We showed that on the plan. It's 15,000 gallons, and we show it both in plan view, in, in other words, the location of it, and also a uh, detail. So I'll show you. I misspoke. I thought it was 20. Well, it was 10. I thought it was drawn as 10 originally, if I remember. Right. It's got to be whatever the fire... Right. Get once. Get once. Exactly. So there are so guidelines. I mean, your there's a calculation. Sure. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Based on the number of units and how much time, and so forth. So, so um, your your local rules don't set forth. This is how big a cistern has to be. That would be very unusual for any town to do so. But there is um, a nationwide um, guideline published by something called NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association. Um, and so we followed those guidelines. And based on those guidelines, we came up with 15,000 gallons. It's a tank. It's, uh, so again, for your orientation purposes, Thayer Street, the site drive, the wetlands crossing. And just after the uh, trailhead parking area and before the units uh, is where we specify for that tank to be situated and it, it's low tech but effective. It's a tank with a standpipe, and the details of which again are shown uh, on the plans. And it, it contains um, a pipe that the. Uh, so it's underground with almost a hydrant? Exactly. Okay. Yes, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Yes. So here's, here's a little bit of a cross section of it. There's the tank. It's got 
a, uh, a standpipe. It's like a hydrant, um, except it's not under pressure, but the fire department hooks up to it. It's got an access port, and it has a couple of other um, gooseneck type of um, uh, penetrations or pipes, and that's just for, events, for right? airflow. Yeah. So again, yeah. it's low tech, but effective. Do you landscape around it so it looks nice? or Yeah, we don't show a heck of a lot of landscaping, although it is right next to the trailhead parking area. So it's in an area that's already... It'll you know, be mowed at least. I want to see and all, all you see, you don't see the tank, of course, you just see the, the, um, the three penetrations. So, um, yeah, it's between, between the parking areas right on the edge of the road. So there's not a lot of landscaping around it. We certainly don't want to hide that standpipe. So, right. um, so that's, that was in response to the um, uh, comment by the, the fire chief. I can tell you in rural communities, cisterns are becoming more and more popular with fire chiefs. And, and I have, I'm just permitting in my other job um, a couple other ones where this notion of allowing the fire chief to have access 24 seven is a big deal because who knows what happens on there or anywhere else he can draw water from it. So that's another feature I think that's important. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, uh, on that point, while we're on the topic, as Jack mentioned, um, with, with Dylan's uh, help, which I appreciate, we did prepare for your consideration a draft of this uh, open space residential special permit. And there's sort of a, a companion permit, if you will, which is the stormwater management permit. Now, the public hearings that you've had and, and the review of the project have sort of, you know, condensed those two processes. But because they're separate permits, uh, we did draft one for each. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, my, my intention, our intention was to, to give this uh, to you so that you'd have a copy this evening to be able to, to look at. Um, so that is the open space residential special permit. And what I'm giving you now is you're gonna see very much like um, the open space residential permit. And this one's called the stormwater management Any permit. Other permit. No? Yeah, so, um, you know, I don't expect you to uh, re review it and digest it in this moment, but um, the, the gist of it is that the open space residential permit is a little more comprehensive than the stormwater permit. And that's because the criteria for issuing the uh, special permit is a little more broad. Um, so I would say it, it, it's, it's correct to say that everything in the stormwater permit is in the special permit. So for, for the sake of your time and efficiency, if you read the, the special permit, you'd, yeah, you'd know everything thing. that was in both permits. And just very quickly, the way it's structured, uh, there, there's some essential information on the first page, and then uh, Roman numeral sections one through, I think, six, beginning with the background section. And then we uh, enumerate in, in Roman numeral two all the documents submitted, all the various exhibits. In uh, Roman numeral three is our suggestion of um, findings that you should uh, consider making. With, with any permit, you know, you're required to make certain findings, the details of which are up to you. But I, I gave you a, a list of um, some 22 findings, mostly factual. Roman numeral four, I, I think we're only asking for a single waiver that uh, Dylan pointed out in her memorandum to you way back in, um, I forget when it was, and, and it has to do with, um, I think there's some question of whether or not it's even necessary, but Dylan can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the gist of it is that in an excess of caution, we ought to ask for a waiver because the open space requirements say, well, if you're next to a wetland, there ought to be, you know, a hundred foot buffer. And I think in one, maybe one or two spots, we're, we're encroaching on that buffer. Although, as you recall, you know, the project does include a substantial 18.2 acre, you know, parcel of, of open space. Um, further in Roman numeral five is um, the meat of the decision and, and, and the conditions 
that are uh, listed. I, I give you, I think, uh, 26 special conditions. A lot of them are very standard and would apply to most any project of this size and type. And they deal with issues relating to recording the permit, uh, construction hours, certain things that are required to be in the condo documents, which brings me to Jack's point. I think it's, um, yeah, if you look at condition C-10 on page 7, yeah. Um, there is a specific provision that, that, that we're suggesting to you that says that you, you, sh it, you, know, you should require that the, um, the cond condominium documents have a provision that says that the fire department has access to that cistern basically at all times, unrestricted access basically at all times. And there are other conditions that we think reflect the project and the discussions that we've had over the sessions of the public hearing. And uh, finally, Roman numeral six is simply the record of vote. So, so that's, it, there's a lot there. There's a lot to it, obviously, but um, we think that's a pretty good initial draft of, of a proposed decision should you, you know, be favorably disposed to, to issue it. Uh, back to the changes, I'll, I'll try to be quick. A lot of this is, you know, typographical almost or clerical. Um, we did add a uh, locust plan. We, the, um, the consultant, your engineer, did point out that some of the wells are located within a certain setback, namely 50 feet. So we, we relocated those wells outside of that 50-foot uh, setback. The, um, your, your consultant did raise a question about uh, something we call site distance, which I'm sure you know what that is. So the idea is that um, we, want to, we want to be able to design the project in such a way that vehicles, primarily vehicles exiting the project onto Thayer Street, have enough room to, to see in each direction. Um, and so the consultant did um, point us uh, or, or made mention of a certain standard that's published by MassDOT that says that, well, you need this much sight distance based on this type of roadway and cars um, in, in traveling on what we would call a, a rural roadway. So we're confident we comply with that sight distance requirement. We also mentioned in the letter that um, we are, were, you know, aware of, sort of attuned, if you will, to this issue from the get-go because, you know, of course we take a look at the site, we do a site visit. And uh, we noticed that the, the previously approved plan, and when I say previously approved, you recall that there was a subdivision approved back in, I think, 2006 or something like yep. that. And that has something to do with this project because we're suggesting that that's a good basis for the number of units. Any, in any event, that plan had the road located right about here. And um, the site distance in this direction is sort of the critical one. So we did what we could to push the roadway in, in this the intersection to the north as far as we could to increase that site distance. It was here. We were able to move it up to here. The constraint to moving it further is, you know, the wetland and grading. So basically there's, you know, we show on the plan, and I think it's mentioned in the letter, there's 263 feet of site distance in that direction and 176 in that direction. And the applicable standard for Mass DOT says 165. So we think we're, we're good. And, and in fact, we've done all we can regarding site distance. If you widen the curb cut, curb, the curb cut. Would that help? Like if you made the mouth of the entrance larger? Not really, because the issue is that you it's want a, to, so a car exiting here, even if this curb cut was wider, a car exiting here has to stop and be able to, to if, if a car is um, making a left-hand turn uh, to go north, the uh, potential issue is that a car could exit and be in in the roadway when another car comes around this uh, in this direction and there's just not enough room for that car to safely stop so that's the issue so widening it 
doesn't do too much because, yeah, yeah. because the exit point is going to be the same. Yep. Um, um, so that's, that's the issue. And also the opposite, a car coming in this direction. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that, that's fine because that's just a right hand. Right. So yeah, the, the, the critical movement is a car exiting the site, taking a left, going to the north, and a car coming around in this direction. 176 feet is, is adequate for the design, the speeds that cars should be traveling on that road. Of course, yeah. you always get people sometimes going faster. Not until we repave it. You should be fine. We can't, we can't design <laughs> for that. So, um, okay. So let me, yeah. Other comments were, well, you ought to clarify, add some spot grades here and there. Um, you ought to provide some additional details concerning the trailhead parking, um, which we did do. And... Um, again, a lot of kind of picky, but I'm, I'm not, don't take issue with them. You know, engineering comments, seeking clarification, additional details. Uh, we re relocated a certain soil stock pile area 100 feet from the wetlands. Um, we addressed some of the Conservation Commission um, quest or issues in this same letter. There were some issues where the, the site, the, the plan view section of the drawing was a little different from the a detail in regard to uh, the culvert they were proposing. We clarified uh, those, those inconsistencies. So as Jack said, uh, we do uh, believe with this um, October 10th, I think it is, letter that we've addressed your reviewing engineer's uh, comments. Of course, it's for you, your reviewing engineer to tell you that, not for me to tell you that, but uh, we're pretty sure we have. And in, in furthermore, not only that we have, but I think as Jack alluded, I, I think it's fair to say that the nature of those comments, even if there are a few lingering ones, are at the point where many boards would include a condition in the permit itself that says, hey, by the way, you know, any final comments from our reviewing engineer are, you know, satisfying those comments is a condition, a further condition of the of the permit. Prior to recording. Right. Yeah. And is, is that because they just haven't gotten back with the second set yet? Third set. Third, third set. And third. third. Right. Third set. third set. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. And to, to be fair, you know, we, it was delivered to them on an October 10th. That, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, because we're able to condense our letter, it's the nature of these things. You start here and <laughs> the issues get fewer. Uh, hopefully we're down to a number. I think we are down to a number that they can address them in a uh, fairly short time, fairly short order. Dylan, do you have any questions before we open up to the public? No, I can just comment and say that I, I agree um, with the the decision draft. Uh, most of the comments that were discussed in the um, response letter have also been included in the decision draft, like um, wanting to have the the SWIP, the um, the stormwater plan, yep. to have a copy of that. We want a copy. We want them to make sure there's a copy on site. Um, I know there were some plans missing. Uh, TEC didn't have, I think, the illicit discharge or, or like the O&M operations and maintenance plan. They have that now. Um, so I feel very comfortable with at least the, the fact that the response letters have been well integrated into the decision and are, um, are what are they called? Conditions. So so the, uh, the decision has the provisions for everything we have any concerns about moving forward. Yep. So really- I feel what? confident about that. It's yeah. not a Do you have block. a copy in front of you guys yeah. too? Okay. Yeah. For both the stormwater and the OSRD. Yep. And, oh, sorry, can I mention one more thing? Um, I also spoke with TEC about being involved in uh, pre-construction as well as during construction to uh, inspect the site periodically, which is typical. Um, so they are putting a scope together for that. I'd like them to review the um, the stormwater. Um, 
let me see the site itself you know what sort of um I'm trying to think of my words i'm out of words today yeah it, it it's very typical for us nowadays yeah. to have our peer your peer engineer i gotta remember this side of mine erosion, uh, yeah erosion uh, control monitor construction especially yeah. for the storm water you want to make sure it's installed correctly that the TEC comes out before they cover it up, that kind of thing. Um, and of course, they're paid through up by us until we, it's handed over. Anybody else got any questions or should we open up to the public? Dylan, are you good with the idea of um, sort of like an addendum of concerns that get, you know, that get added? That's typical. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't have anything. All right. Any questions from the public? The okay. Cistern that you guys have been talking about. Where does the water come from? Name and address. Cameloni. <laughs> Eighteen <laughs> Megaway. Hey, yes, it works. So. Um, there are a number of sources. Uh, you see these um, trucks riding around that, that supply water to, um, to to your backyard pool, for example. Or construction um, sites. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's a source. Um, and was it concerned who was paying for it or where the water was? No, from? I think we talked about who was paying for yeah. it. I was literally just wondering where the water yeah. came from. Yeah. Um, so so. That's a good question. We don't directly address that in the in the decision, uh, except to the point where we say that um, uh, we suggest or a condition is that the condominium documents include a provision that says that the condominium association will uh, maintain, repair and replace, I think the words are, uh, all of the infrastructure within the, the project. And that includes the roadways, the septic system and the utilities and specifically including the, the fire and maintained um, the fire cistern. So that puts the burden on the association or the unit owners, you know, to fill it up. How they do it um, is, you know, probably up to them. But as I say, I think there are a number of options. Two that I can think of are uh, the, the private companies that supply water to pools. And, um, you know, I know the town- well for it. What's that? We wouldn't be drilling a well for it. We wouldn't be pulling from. No, the, that's right. The yeah, they, they, yeah, they, yeah, it's too much to fill from the individual. I mean, wells. the theory is this is never used. Yeah. Yeah. Sits. Yeah. Ideally, that's right. That's right. Um, I was going to say, I, I suppose it's possible that you know, I, I know the town has some municipal supply. I suppose it's possible that they could buy you know some water in a tanker from the town. So. Those are the answers that I can think of. But yeah, the, the intention is not either to drill a dedicated well for the cistern or to use the wells that are going to be drilled to, to fill it up. I mean, it's 15,000 gallons is a pretty good amount. Yep. I've got nothing else, anybody? Dylan, what do we, what do, we do from here? What are we looking to accomplish tonight? Um. If you're interested, uh, looking for a vote, and then we clean up the Do I close decision, the public hearing first? and you guys will sign it. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing for 179th there. I will second it. Any other discussion on it? Call for a vote. Roland? Aye. 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 All right, so... So would the next motion be to we do these separate the, the stormwater yep. management? So yeah, give me two. Yep, and and say you know approve with the conditions sure. as written. All right, so I'll make a motion to approve the stormwater management permit for 179th there with the conditions that are attached to it. I will second it. Any other discussion? Call are the vote? Are the con oh sorry. No, just the the conditions are. Yeah, there's a. Um, yep, see. yep, yeah, I see them. There's also almost like a universal one that yeah. we need to satisfy TEC. Mm -hmm. So, I think this is low low risk vote. Um, 
If there's nothing else, call for a vote. Roland? Aye. Jason, aye? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the open space residential development special permit and site plan review decision presented uh, by 179th Air LLC. I'll second it. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. Oh. Aye. Jason, aye. 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 Excellent. All right. So I clean up that decision, uh, send around a draft tomorrow or the next day, and then I'll just need the board to come in and sign next week if you have time. Excellent. Yeah, we want to make sure Roland's name's on there. Yeah. Uh, and yep. they, you'll, they, my, I found a typo today. They misspelled my name, so. I already found I saw one typo. I'll grab it. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. I'll fall on the sword. That was me, not Dylan. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. Thank you. A lot of work for this. I think it's a good project. I wouldn't yeah. be here if I thought A lot of back otherwise. and forth. It was good. Yeah. All right. Well, we can tomorrow. bring our friend back up, the chair. Yeah. He didn't spell jerk, did he? So it was Jack, right? I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I would, because if Bob would, I would have to have words. Yeah. We'd have to have words. Remember, Dylan's last day. If you need me unofficially, I'm not getting paid by you guys anymore, but right. if you need help. Okay. Thank you kindly, Jack. Thanks. Thank you. Especially now, this is all. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it a little easier. All right. Um, getting back to our agenda planners report. Dylan, you got anything for us before you leave? It's all about me this time. <laughs> so um, my wife's C section is scheduled for the 29th, so uh, you're not going to see me again. <laughs> Until you'll well, see me again. Just, seriously. You know, give me a month. So I'll be gone for the month of November. Um, if you really need me, uh, I've sent my cell phone number around to you guys. Um, just text me. I'll get back when I can. Obviously, it won't be right away. But it's if like, there's something pressing, I'm, I am. I do exist. So I think the <laughs> only thing we're going to have is Lincoln Street, right? Lincoln Street. Yeah. I'll come That'd in be... and check the box and see if anything else is coming yeah. in. That would be great. Yeah, I'm going to uh, just make sure that everyone has your email, Pam, for that one. Yep. Um, so I'm going to ask the fire chief and uh, police chief to send it to your email. My vacation responder will also say to send it to you. Okay. Any any questions that people have. Um, the planning board is going to need responsible for putting an agenda in. Yep. Have you guys, you've done that before, Pam? I've done it for many years. It's, a, it's nice right. to have you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so if you can put an agenda together for the November meetings, I won't be doing that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Otherwise, there's nothing else that you, that you're foreseeing that could possibly come up in the next bit. So we'll just um, keep you posted when you get back. And we yeah. don't we don't have anything left to do with their street at all, really, do we? Not here. No. No. So we're done. No, with that. I will take care of uh, finishing up just a decision. I saw a typo or two, and then you guys I'll send it around and see you guys to yeah. review. Yep. Dylan's gonna let us. And then yeah, I'll tell you when you can come in and sign it. All right, perfect. We lost our public. There's no forum. I know, there's no public. <laughs> that was cool for a little while. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, the paperwork that they're going to need to sign, you're going to leave it on your desk? Yeah, that's my plan. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll make sure you all know where that is. Yeah. I can right. put it in the box, too, or, you know, Diane can hand it to you, whatever works. Okay. It'll be somewhere easy to find. Perfect. All right. Otherwise, um, if there's nothing else, our next meeting is November 25th, 6 p.m. That's a Monday night. Um, let me know if you're not going to be able to make it because we're going to be going a few weeks without any meetings unless something yeah. comes up. Um, they will need a quorum because it's a continuation of a public hearing. Yeah, we're going to have continuation. Here, so. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, motion to close our meeting. You got it. Fantastic. I will second it. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night.